Good evening folks, organic synthesis, um, another video on how to take organic molecules apart and make better ones from them. I would like to look tonight at homo and heterolytic bond fission and I would also like to look at electrophiles and nucleophiles. I'm going to do definitions of each of these and examples. The SQA want you to know some examples of both, particularly these ones. Um, so we're going to have a look at that tonight. Right, let's have a look at both of these guys. Definitions first. Homolytic bond fission is very simply the fact that when we split this bond here, this bond is completely non-polar because these are both identical electronegativities. Get your shot in the center of the screen, hey. Pretend to know what you're doing. So there is a pair of electrons in this bond and there is a pair of electrons, of course, in this bond. Technically speaking, these are sigma bonds. Um, go and have a look, if you're not sure, at my molecular hybridization video. Uh, a lot of people seem to find it quite useful because it's a difficult concept. So these are standard, normal, whatever that means, uh, single bonds. A pair of electrons in this area of space. Homolytic bond fission, what we're going to do is we're going to break this bond so that one electron ends up on this atom, one electron ends up on this atom. This bond is going to be broken in a more conventional sense. Both electrons are going to go plop onto this atom. Let me show you how we depict that. Uh, let's do this one first, because this is possibly slightly easier to go with. Chlorine is a higher electronegativity than carbon, by the way, which is why the, the electrons end up on the chlorine. So we're going to take, we're going to show by an arrow, the arrow starts where the electrons currently are, and the curly arrow, as it's called, is going to go to where the electrons are going to end up. So this is a way in organic chemistry of showing the movement of electrons. In this case, it's of a pair of electrons, and we will create C and then the Cl with a minus charge, chloride ion, in other words. This is going to boggle your brain slightly because we've never seen this before. But if you look at this whole picture here, it is neutral at the start. So therefore, the products have to be neutral. And at the moment, they're not this carbon has got a positive charge on it. It's called a carbocation. Cation is an old-fashioned name for just a positive ion. Carbocation, some people pronounce it. Whatever. Um, that sounds like a holiday destination. Come to Carbocation, where the sun shines 12 hours a day. I shouldn't do these videos late at night. So, carbocation and a chloride ion. So, this is heterolytic bond fission. A fairly conventional idea. What is going to go on here? By the way, you notice the curly arrow has got a standard pointy head on it. I did mime earlier on that we're going to go like that, which we are, and also like that. I suppose I should have put that on the other side. Sorry about that. Uh, you notice the curly arrows here have got only a single point on them. That is indicating this is homolytic bond fission. One electron's gone one way, one electron's gone the other way. What on earth do you make here? Well, we make two of this bad boy or bad girl, of course, there. This dot indicates uh, that what we've created is a bromine radical. Now, a radical was an atom or molecule with an unpaired electron. We're not going to go into what exactly that means. I'll try and find a link. I think Professor Dave has got quite a good uh, selection of videos on organic chemistry. I'll see if we can find what he suggests for this. I'm not going to go into it here because you are not really required to know what it means. If you remember your higher stuff, you'll remember these are super reactive and these are responsible for the wrinkles on the back of my hand and the fact that my beard has gone grey in old age. Radicals in living creatures slowly accumulate damage to your DNA. Scary. Radicals in fires are what causes fires to spread so well. And radicals in food can cause it to go off. So generally speaking, radicals are a bad thing. And we're about to see that in organic chemistry, they are just equally useless in terms of controllable reactions. Let me just check that I've covered the stuff. SQA page 83 here. Homolytic fission results in the formation of two neutral radicals. It occurs when each atom retains one electron, the bond breaks evenly, and normally occurs when non-polar bonds are broken. Jolly good. Heterolytic fission, two oppositely charged ions, uh, bond breaks unevenly, and it's caused by polar bonds. Let's have a look at 
uh, what difference that makes to the reactions. Okay, on the left here, we've got a homolytic reaction involving an alkane and bromine. We're going to need to hit this with ultraviolet light. The ultraviolet light will cause this homolytic bond fission. You're going to end up with bromine radicals, which are going to bash into uh, this uh, propane molecule minding its own business. And you end up making... Uh, well, the way we did it at higher, you ended up knocking off one of these hydrogens and replacing it with a bromine. So it looked like everything was fine. We appeared to make one bromopropane. In reality, because... Oh, dear me. Sorry. In reality, because uh, these are chaotic in their reactions, what you can end up is making multiple substitutions on the same molecule. And you end up with a soup of products. You end up with singly substituted, di-substituted, tri-substituted, you end up with other weird things that you end up making, if you remember one of the termination reactions was to join two of these radicals together. So you end up making little scattered molecules of hexane in amongst all the, uh, your other products. Homolytic reactions are a bad thing, generally speaking, in organic chemistry. How do you recognise them um, in SQA questions? Well, it's pretty much the only way of plucking off a hydrogen from an alkyl group and replacing it with a halogen. You can't normally do that. Whereas, if you have a polarised bond, like this, sorry about that, um, if you have a nice polarised bond carbon chlorine, you can ease, relatively easily break this. So we'll do our pair of electrons popping onto there. Uh, and we have something else incoming, oh, say like a hydroxide ion. This will then come in. So let's stick with the same notation, by the way. This will then come into attack. I show much more detail in this on my video on SN1 and SN2 reactions. Go and have a look at that and we can you can link it in your own head to what we're doing here. And we end up making just a single boring but incredibly reliable product. We end up just making propan 1-all and that is your lot. Everything else is fine. So these reactions, as I said, are usually bad. These reactions, on the other hand, these are good because they are nice and controllable. Have I covered everything here? Hold on two seconds. Reactions involving homolytic fission tend to result in the formation of very complex mixtures, making them unsuitable for organic synthesis. Whereas these ones uh, are far better because they're far more controllable. Let's move on to the second part of the video tonight and have a look at homo... Uh, sorry, we've done homolytic... Uh, we'll have a look at nucleophiles and electrophiles. Okay, electrophiles are things which are attracted to negative charge. So the conclusion that they themselves would be things with a positive charge. They don't get a big say in organic chemistry at SQA, advanced higher level, but they are useful in university level. So the good news is we'll do them first because they're quicker. Basically, they are things which have a positive charge, um, or neutral molecules which are electron deficient. That's the phrase the SQA uses. So what I'm going to do is not go into that much more. I'm just going to say examples are a hydrogen ion, which, of course, if you've seen my uh, physical chemistry ones, we know doesn't actually exist. A better way to represent it is that, the hydronium ion. You can also have one of my favourites because it's used to make Explosives. Can I make? Can I say explosives in videos online, or uh, will I be put on a government watch list? Sorry, will I be updated on my current current government watch list that I'm already on? And another one is SO3, sulfur trioxide. These these two will tend to be. Oh, interestingly, there's one that's not mentioned in this list here, but they expect you to know about it, which is a chlorine with a positive charge. What's going on there? Have a look at my benzene video because these are all involved in substitutions on benzene molecules. So I'm going to have a look at that. And this is involved in acid-catalyzed hydration reactions, which is part of my alkene um, additions video. So go and have a look at that as well. He says, publicizing his own work. What a narcissist. Nucleophiles, on the other hand, tend to be things which are negative or they have a non-bonded pair of electrons. Please don't confuse non-bonded with um, unpaired electrons. They are seriously different. Non-bonded pair of electrons are what I joke about in the case of ammonia 
for my alien head. So it's a pair of electrons which are not involved in a bond. That's non-bond electrons. Unpaired electrons are what we just talked about with the radicals. They are a seriously different gang. Uh, the ones they mention, they being the SQA, uh, are your classic, any of the halogens, basically. So Cl- minus or Br- minus or F-. Minus. Um, there's also hydroxide, OH-. Minus. There's a new one, uh, Cn-, minus, uh, which I've just finished doing a video on, for nucleophilic substitutions. These nucleophiles tend to be involved in nucleophilic substitutions. By the way, what I just showed you here, this is a nucleophilic substitution. We're substituting chlorine for hydroxyl and the hydroxide ion is a nucleophile because it's negative. Um, so this is the cyanide. Cy, spell it right here. Cyanide. Is that right? No, it's not. Silly old fool. Cyanide ion. Any other ones? Oh yeah, what I've just mentioned. Ammonia, of course. These are neutral ones. H2O. Water, of course, has got two non-bonded pairs of electrons. So it's definitely a nucleophile. Uh, and those are the only ones they mention. Although uh, another one, again, they don't mention in this page, the SQA, but we need to know about alkoxide ions, which are an O-, minus, which is joined to a carbon, possibly more than one carbon. So... I mentioned these in my ethers video. So these are alkoxide ions. Let me just check some for a sec. Yes, sorry, I was just checking that I do go into details on how to actually make alkoxide ions in my ethers video. That's ethers, go and look it up. Um, so I'm not gonna talk about it here. Are we nearly finished? Yeah, <laughs> funny story. If I'm still teaching advanced hire, by the time uh, you get to choosing it, guys, then ask me about the fact that within the first year at Melbourne Academy, a long time ago, as I said, 1864, I think, um, I started working here and was trying to help my boss dispose of some sodium metal and ended up the only time I've ever had to use a fire extinguisher. Entirely my fault because my plan for disposing of the sodium involved these here. It did not go well. Mistakes were made. I think that's it for tonight, though. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.